This is the Devil's Guide to D&D. Devil's Delegate here, and I'm back for my third look at the eight subclasses from the Matt Mercer Critical Role Taldori Reborn just released. Today it's one of the ones that's getting a lot of discussion. The Bard's College of Tragedy. And I'm going to start with the conclusion. This one is good. Very, very good. As in, one of the best subclasses in the game, if not the very best. Now what do I mean by that? I don't mean that it's the most powerful. It is powerful, and you'll make a very effective character with it. You'll have no complaints. But even limiting it to bards, it isn't the strongest. The College of Eloquence is clearly more powerful. So we're not breaking the game here. We are, however, making the game more fun. No class so perfectly mixes power and joy, which is an amusing thought for a tragedy bard. It does this by bringing entertainment to failure. In D&D, if you succeed, it's fun, and you'll succeed a lot with this subclass, but failing can be less fun. But not here. With the tragedy bard, when you win, you win. And when you lose, you win. Let's see how. Bards get their subclass at third level, usually with features that connect to their bardic inspiration. And the tragedy bard continues this format. It starts with poetry in misery. When you or an ally rolls a one on an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, you can use your reaction to regain a spent bardic inspiration. Bardic inspirations are very strong. So getting one back is going to feel good, easily mitigating the pain for that one. And looking at this, I'm surprised that a feature like this has never come up before. It works on two levels. Besides the obvious, when you fail, you now get a reward, which is going to make it a lot less painful to fail. But additionally, it means the bard is not going to be holding on to all of its inspirations, as some players do. After all, it's a valuable resource and you hate to run out of them. But you're going to feel stupid if someone rolls a one and you're full up on inspirations. So as soon as you get into battle or as soon as anything comes up, you're going to want to give one of these to a member of your party right away. I also like that the role play is actually built into the feature. After all, if you look, you're not just using your reaction to regain a bardic inspiration. You're using your reaction to regain that bardic inspiration and to soliloquize. And that's not saying you can do this. It's saying you do do this. So get ready for some grand statements or recitations of poetry. If that's not good for a few laughs, I don't know what is. Now, there's one thing a DM should keep in mind. You want to watch players just making up work. I mean, after all, this is the college of tragedy, not the college of no big deal, I was just goofing around. So the bard should be regaining his bardic inspirations when they fail at something that they're actually really trying to do. For attack rolls and saving throws, that's not going to be an issue. But for ability checks, you could have a player, when he finds he's out of bardic inspirations, just go, I'm going to try and lift this bookcase. I'm going to try and lift it again. Again. I'll try and lift it again until he fails with a one. As a DM, you should limit this to die rolls for things that actually matter. As is the norm, we get a second ability at third level, and that's Sorrowful Fate. When you are an ally, do something to force a creature to make a saving throw. You can use one of your bardic inspirations to change the type of saving throw to Charisma. Now, one of the reasons I grade a lot of spells lower is because they target constitution, and most of the monsters in D&D have really good constitutions. When they're not targeting that, they target Wisdom, which creatures tend to have at least okay... But charisma? You're not going to run into very many things that have good charisma unless you're facing charisma casters. So this is placing a huge minus on that creature's save. And suddenly a whole lot of spells I don't like that much are looking a lot better. If I'm a tragedy bard, hold person just went back on my list. Now this feature has a couple riders with it. Firstly, if the target then fails its save, which it's probably going to, it takes psychic damage equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration die, which honestly is not a big deal and less of a deal as you go up in level, but it's a nice little add-on. But the second part is the fun part, which is that target is plagued by regret for one minute. I'm going to like to see how that plays out. But then if it's reduced to zero hit points, they are magically compelled to utter darkly poetic final words before dying. While Poetry and Misery require the bard's player to come up with some pretty clever, fun lines, this one's going to make your DM work. The DM is now going to have to play out over-the-top death scenes. And as a DM, I'm really for this. And you can use this feature once between short rests. This reminds me of the Eloquence Bard's Unsettling Words feature that lets him debuff a saving throw. That feature is stronger mainly because he 
can do it up to five times between short rests, but this one's strong and funnier. At 6th level, we get Tale of Hubris, which once again rewards you in tragic situations. In this case, when a critical hit is scored against you or an ally, you can then spend a bardic inspiration to target that attacking creature and evoke the story of their downfall. For the next minute, rolls of 18, 19, and 20 are critical hits against that target. And when you reach 14th level, that also includes a roll of 17. That much of an increase in the critical range for a minute almost guarantees that someone on your side is going to crit on him. And isn't it fun to get revenge? This feature, of course, is stronger depending on your party composition. The more members of your party that are rolling attack rolls, the better this is. Also at 6th level, you get Impending Misfortune. When you make an attack roll or a saving throw, you can gain a plus 10 bonus to the roll just by saying it. But then, of course, this comes with a price. The next attack roll or saving throw you make, you get a minus 10 penalty. That penalty goes away when you take a rest, or amusingly, if you're reduced to zero hit points. Okay, you're a bard, so you're not going to be making many attack rolls. But saving throws, yeah, you make those. When you get into a lot of trouble, this plus 10 will get you out of it. Now, as a tragedy bard, I would think seriously about picking up an attack hand trip or getting yourself a crossbow. So after you take that plus 10, you can shoot a crossbow and fail with it. Because you don't want to be caught with that minus 10 when you make your next saving throw. And finally, at 14th, we get the Nimbus of Pathos. And this is the perfect topper for a hilarious, tragic moment. Okay, you get to empower either yourself or another creature, and it's gonna be another creature. This is not for you. For one minute, the creature is surrounded by mournful music and ghostly singing. You'll want to play that up as much as possible. The effects of this? The creature has a plus four bonus to its AC. That's huge in D&D 5e. It also has advantage on all attack rolls and saving throws, which again is huge. And it does an extra 1d10 radiant damage when it attacks. Also very powerful. This is fitting for the end of a great poetic saga, which it needs to be because there's some downsides here. Firstly, any attacks against the creature score crits on 18 through 20. But also, when the effect ends, the creature immediately drops to zero hit points and is dying. Okay, and that one's just funny. So, when it's time to make that great tragic last stand, here you go. Toss it on one of your teammates, and he gets the limelight as he gets to go in, bravely defeating the enemy before he falls to his death. Now, generally for bards, due to the known spell mechanic, I'm not big on them digging deep into being healers, but the tragedy bard really does need some healing, at least some basics, and probably raise dead. And I might even use my magical secrets to pick up Revivify, because this is a great feature, which is going to end up with some dead characters. Luckily, battles rarely last for more than a minute, so chances are if it drops to zero, you'll be able to use a simple healing spell to get them back up again. And that's the Tragedy Bard. Every single feature is really helpful to both the Bard and to the entire party, and it's just a lot of fun. This is good design. Matt Mercer's forgiven for any failings he might have had. I'm thinking of the Blood Cleric. The design here is great. I can't imagine this being anything but a plus at your table. So I encourage you to allow this in your game. And if you're more player than DM, then yeah, give this one a shot. And that's it for this time. I'll be back next time with another review of one of those eight subclasses in Teldori Reborn. And until then, relax. For me, the absinthe is calling.